Today there's a rush to find metals that are key components for cell phones, televisions, weapon systems, wind turbines, MRI machines, hybrid cars, and of course anything related to space exploration and high-tech uh, satellite equipment. Well, the following articles that are posted below just came out Sunday and Monday here in Asia and in the West talking about Gold Rush era discards could be an answer for rare earth minerals that China has a monopoly on. Um, I find it a little bit humorous because uh, these Gold Rush era mines that have been left open from copper and gold mining um, would not be a significant amount of rare earth material to be a game changer, especially when the United States doesn't really manufacture much of anything. Uh, all the manufacturing is left. The high-tech manufacturing is going on in Asia. So uh, the, these news articles here um, are a little bit humorous uh, when you think about it. But uh, China, yeah, uh, has 97% uh, of all rare earth metals in the world. And just two years ago, what happened was, of course, that uh, China raised prices and cut the amount of rare earth material that can be exported to use in things like uh, batteries for popular cars such as the Prius, uh, to use in lasers and lamps and all kinds of stuff that is required uh, for nations to continue to uh, make high-tech equipment and explore space in the future. Well. 97% of the rare earth materials are in China, the easily accessible rare earth metals. And that's the key because, uh, as you know, uh, rare earth metals are not all that rare. What's rare about them in this circumstance is that uh, how hard they are to extract. Same thing with oil, right? There's a lot of crude oil out there. It's just that can you extract it at a price that is uh, economically sound and can you distribute it to the places that need it and get a fair price for it. Uh, these are the key factors with oil um, as well as with of course gold, silver, rare earth materials. I mean there was an article several months ago that talked about that there's silver content and gold content in the ocean's water but it's such a minuscule, minuscule amount that to refine it would be uh, so uh, high advantageous of a cost that it wouldn't even be worth um, considering. It's a waste of energy to even calculate what it would take. So these news articles here also are, are, are like that, uh, talking about um, how, to, how to get rare earth, <laughs> how to squeeze, it, squeeze water from a stone, right? I mean, there just simply isn't enough in the West to uh, be able to go forward and to meet demand. Japan even saying that it's going to break China's stranglehold on rare earth metals with a sea mud bonanza. Kind of reminds you of the uh, tar sands of Canada, right, for crude oil. Well, it's not economically sound to be pulling out sea mud and trying to get the rare earth materials out of it. No, unfortunately, the world's going to have to pay the piper, and in this case, the piper is the Chinese. And whatever th they uh, call up for... Uh, demand for the rare earth materials is going to have to be met one way or the other and there's no magic bullet and there's no uh, secret discovery or deposit of rare earth material that's going to change the situation so going forward that and many other factors alone are going to mean that China regardless of the economy in China and world politics is going to be a key area a key uh, pivot point in the world uh, Asia into uh, the Middle East and Europe